And we are here with the victorious Mr. Liam Griffin himself. How you doing, my friend? Thank yeah, I'm going thank bit. you. <laughs> so before we get stuck in post-fight recovery, how are you feeling? What's the damage report? We all right? Yeah, um, shins are a bit knocked up. Um, legs a little bit bruised, but yeah, well, you know, overall, pretty good, really, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't hurt as much when you get them for the win, isn't it? It's like yeah. no, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. The the ego's not been bruised either this time, so <laughs> it's the most important thing. I mean, yeah. so regards of this show in itself, is it the first I've heard of it? Whereabouts are you right now? Um, I'm in Bangkok. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shit, I thought you were like local. I thought okay, this is first I've heard of a Thai show, like you know locally oh no yeah yeah no no i'm i'm in thailand at the minute yeah 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 oh someone's doing all right so how long you been out there for um i think this is my sixth week now yeah so i came over um at the beginning of february so i had to do away in two weeks quarantine um got through that that was a bit of a mental challenge as well and then yeah straight into training and then three weeks later you know, I'm I'm fighting out here, so yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, this is like beyond envious right now, but I'll try and you know hold it in a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with this plan to go out there to do what you're doing now, was this like a preemptive thing? Was it a spontaneous thing? What encouraged this trip? Yeah, well, I was meant to be um coming out here last May, um for you know six six months to a year or however long, and then obviously COVID pushed that back. Um, and then I wasn't really sure, you know, should, should I carry on with the plan or not? And then just the way the UK sort of played out, you know, no fights were happening, you know, you know, yourself, you know, gyms were open and closed. And so, um, yeah, I just, uh, managed, managed to sort it out and, you know, I took a gamble. Like I didn't know whether I was actually going to make it out here, but I just thought, you know what, I'll go for it. And yeah, you know, it come off and I managed to get out here. So. Yeah. That's sweet, man. So regards of staying out there and longevity and everything else, are you working still? Mm-hmm. Are you working remotely? Is you is your is more to your career? Like um so I was working, I've got a degree in accounting actually. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, you know, weird, you know, account accountant <laughs> by day, you know, sort of fighter by night. You know? Very fight club. But, um, yeah. Um, but so yeah, I had a job um as an accountant and then they were actually going to give me a sabbatical um last year um to leave and come to thailand for a little bit but um i actually left my job this time i was just like i did you know with covid and it being up and down i didn't want mess anyone about and tell them i was leaving and then not Mm -hmm. leaving again because you know something cropped up and you know plan no plans really set in stone at the minute are they so i was just like um so yeah, basically, I just I just left the job. You know, I've got plenty of savings and stuff that I saved up for the trip. So, and then yeah, we'll see where we go. If I need make some money, we'll figure it out as we go along. Really, you know. But yeah, that, that was the most composed I've ever heard someone say. I left my job and moved to Thailand. Like yeah, <laughs> let's appreciate what you've just said there. <laughs> A career you've got in accountancy. You've just said, you know what? I'm gonna go to Thailand. I'm gonna fight and compete and get stuck in. That's fucking mega, man. Yeah, basically. Not, not yeah. over. Not even that. <laughs> Appreciate how amazing that risk and that everything is. I love that. I love that so much. I and mean, I'll tell you afterwards why I love that so to, much as well. To be honest, mate, like I, I probably like I say I downplayed this a little bit. Then there was a lot of anxiety whilst I was doing it. But um, yeah, yeah. So why Bangkok specifically? Because again, in Thailand, obviously there's a plethora of gyms. There's everything there. Mm-hmm. Why the specific gym you're at now? Um, well, to be honest, like um, whilst I was planning on coming out here, Thailand was like locking down again a little bit because of COVID. And then um, it sort of just opened up as I came out of quarantine again. Um, but FA Group, the gym that I'm at now, it's like, it's it's a well known it's a well known gym and it's well known clinch gym as well which you you know my style is like quite clinch orientated back in the UK as well so um, that's one of the reasons why I chose to come here and um, yeah just gave it a go got stuck in really they've got a good stable of Thai fighters as well so 
yeah, I'm I'm a bit of the whooping boy at the minute in the gym, but yeah. <laughs> Again, it's one of those problems. You need to remember why you asked for it a little bit. Like, yeah, I don't want to be yeah, the best guy in a local yeah. gym. I want to be here. I tell this yeah. with the eyes back of my head. <laughs> my my yeah. legs are like a bit bruised. Yeah, that's it. Good yeah. for me. This, yeah. is, this is good. Um, again, with a very clinch style game, again, I'm very much a casual for everyone listening who's not aware of this when it comes to Muay Thai. And I appreciate the clinch game is very intricate. And when you come to Thailand, again, it's something that is supposedly levels above the UK side of things. Mm, why do yeah. you feel you've use that style yourself then is it something you found just works for your build for your game why do you feel that's worked for you yeah um i you know uh, our gym back in the uk we we do a lot of clinch and you know that's something that our fighters implement in their game um and yeah like you say it, it just it, it fits into my build my my style um so that's that's one of the main reasons why i sort of chose this gym to just you know try and amplify that really you know and where do you train back in the uk um so i, I don't know if you do you know stoke have you heard of yeah yeah. Stoke stoke. On trend? yeah yeah okay yeah yeah so yeah it's a uh, it's the local you know stoke stoke tie stoke tie boxing it's the only muay thai gym um in stoke really so yeah have you traveled much in the uk for like trains obviously you got near leeds area obviously you got bad company you obviously got super patch and all those sort of things yeah um yeah over the last um few years i've recently started doing a bit of training with um, nathan bendon down in birmingham mm. um so leading up to fights you know i'll go down there and do some work with nathan like he's he's really good he's a good good training partner um obviously he's he's taught by dean james and and you know a lot of a lot of um experienced people so yeah I, other than that, mate, like um, I just get about and do a bit of sparring sometimes with um, Josh Hill and um, uh, some of those lads uh, towards the you know Manchester, Liverpool, Bolton area. But yeah, yeah, no, not not too much travelling. If I'm honest, mate, like you know. So obviously you got Dean James, a friend of the podcast, who was on not too long ago as well. And again, mm-hmm. someone like that with that experience it's so important to really pick their brains. Like when it comes to you training with these other people, I mean, obviously not traveling too much, but people you speak to, what kind of stuff are you asking them? Is it more stuff you need? Is it something you even ask at all? Do you ask them questions? Yeah. I mean, um, Nathan, and I'm guessing he's, he sort of implemented it from Dean as well. Like the retention to details, like really good, you know, like, when it comes, I think it, that obviously comes from like Tony, Tony Myers and and, mm-hmm. and um, his his way of coaching as well. But the attention to detail, like foot placement, you know, uh, composure, movement, the way that you're stepping, the way that you're kicking, it's all so, so specific. That's why I enjoy going down and um, training with Nathan because he'll just pick you up on, you know, the slightest little detail and he's, you know... Uh, yeah, he's he's very specific with um, when you're doing pads and 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 uh, doing sessions with him. And when you're doing your pads, when you're hitting the pads, how much are you? I don't know. Are you quite actively thinking about strategies and things like that, or is it just hitting as hard and as technically as you possibly can? Um, I suppose it it, it depends where you are. Um, if you're leading up to a fight, then yeah, um, I try and implement things that i'm going to use in the fight or you know my brain's ticking if i if i know my opponent does certain things um you know yeah my brain's ticking but other than that it's just basically staying sharp and if if i'm working on anything in the gym at the minute i'll try to bring that into the pad work as well um yeah just a mix of everything really you know are you on for visualization like are you on who's shadow boxes and really thinks about the whole thing is it something you yeah, use quite a lot yeah yeah, I do. Yeah, um, I try, especially leading up to this fight, with it being the first fight um, in a while. I've done quite a bit of visualization for it, just because I was trying to sort of remember those feelings, you know, just before you actually step into the ring, because it's been a while. So you can't um, replicate it exactly, but yeah, I'm I'm quite big on visualization. That's a that's a big thing. Yeah. So. Barmy is going into more detail with this. So when it comes to the fight being signed up to the day itself, 
do you when do you start properly visualizing what's going on um probably about a month out yeah i'd say um i'd say two to three times a week about a month out i'd do you know just um in terms of shadow boxing obviously uh, shadow boxing most days, visualizing the fight, thinking about things. But in terms of sitting down and actually thinking about fight day, thinking about the nerves, um, just I'd give myself maybe 10 minutes um, a few times a week leading up to the fight, you know, just to try and get my brain in that, in that zone backstage, you know, leading into the fight, getting into the ring, all of those things. And when I, it's going to sound quite strange. Do you use a previous fight as like a a mirror image kind of to represent that? Is it its own thing you're trying to create? Because again, it's a weird one to explain because whenever I've tried to visualize things, mine's been a fairly, I don't know, either reliving a fight in itself where I've gone through, okay, here's the room, here's the toilets, here's the room, it's what it's going to smell like, I walk through there. Like how, Yeah. is it more remembering things you've been through before or creating a picture for where you're going to be, if you see what I mean? Um. Yeah, I, to be honest, I'd, yeah, I generally just use the format that I've been through before, to be honest, like because the, you know, the, the setup and it, it isn't as important. I, I feel like it's more the build up and the emotions and like you say, the smells, the feelings. The, it doesn't really matter where the location is. Mm. It's just about, you know, taking yourself through the, the process of, you know, sitting down, getting your hands wrapped, taking a few deep breaths, getting massage, getting warmed up, you know, and then just that, th- those feelings of a few minutes before you walk out and you have that little bit of a panic just before you're about to walk out, you know, and um, yeah, the location doesn't really, for me, for me in my head, it doesn't really matter. It's just about going through the process and, and, and thinking about the, the whole day, really. So to sort of follow on from that then, what part of that helps you be composed? Have you got like a prompt when you're feeling that kind of <clears throat> overwhelmed to sort of deal with it? Um, I mean, I think that the anxiety and the nerves and the, it's more, to be honest, it's more anticipation, anticipation really, but um, it, do, it never goes away. I feel like you just get a little bit better at channeling the energy um the emotions um i think it just comes from doing it more and doing it more regularly you know and then sometimes it creeps if if, like for me with the visualization if i if i haven't done it enough um or previous to when i sort of implemented it properly it sort of creeps up on you and um you know you're backstage and then all of a sudden it's like shit i'm about i'm about to go and fight someone you know but you know that's part of the visualization you just sort of taught yourself you know when when you're in there it's like right okay i've, I've been here before i know what i'm gonna do you know and it's it's just about thinking you know when you get in the ring and especially with thai boxing because there's a lot of you know traditional stuff that you do where you get mm. in the ring and bow and all, all of those things like if you don't think about them sometimes in the moment when you're doing them you're like shit i've done that wrong or and then all of a sudden like you get a bit flustered but if you talk yourself through it, it, it it's okay then yeah again there's there's quite a lot in this and um, where some of it to not sound too what's the word ignorant or i don't know what the word is but the music and everything else i can't help but feel kind of takes you out of it a little bit you kind of have to catch up but something about the thai style i really like is the first couple of rounds that sort of feeling out process of sort of the warm-up rounds because again, when yeah, it comes to yeah. most other disciplines, it's from the word go, it's trying to take each other's heads off. Like yeah, you can actually yeah. build up. And even the little the walking, the ceremony, that kind of thing, I feel that helps deal with it. Because again, the ring, ring walking from the first hit is auto, is pretty much autopilot. It's weird. Mm. Like, I don't know. I found that quite useful. And when it comes to your... Sorry, mate, go on. Are you going to say something? No, no, no. No, no, no. I, go on. Finish up. I think I'm going to say the same thing anyway. As I say, it's more just it helps sort of flow, helps you sort of realize, okay, this is going to be all right from here onwards. Because again, mm-hmm. it's anticipation before you get to that first walk, because it's not yeah. a cut and dry as his switch is on or off. No, it's a bit of, okay, the pressure's coming on. We're getting closer and closer. Yeah. And closer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now we're here. Okay, now it's getting, 
gets sort of desensitized a little bit. Am I right in saying that? Because again, I'm not had a tie fight myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was having this conversation the other day, actually. And to be honest, I, I'm tr- I try not to say one way or the other, or oh, like, for example, the ritual dance and, and all of those things. I try not to say one way or the other, oh, yeah, I, I prefer it because you know there might be promotions where like they don't let you do it and then all of a sudden like you just got to throw yourself in in my head i don't want to say i need to do it to perf- to perform my best you know but um i do i think there are benefits from it you know like like you say um you get in the ring one good thing is you get to move around the ring a little bit yeah. um you take a couple of deep breaths um and and for me it just helps sort of separate myself from my emotions you know like when, when you when you just move in when you're you know sealing the ring doing the ritual dance you close your eyes a little bit you do a, take a few deep breaths um and then it's like okay i'm in here now let's let, let's do it like you say it sort of relieves a little bit of that when you first get in and it's like right we'll go you know we're going now and it's just like go you, you get a chance to actually um get in the ring and move around and actually do something in the ring before you're actually getting, you know, punched in the face or whatever. So, <laughs> But again, there's something to be said for that. Again, little things like a little bounce around the sort of the canvas. You feel mm. like where the spring mm-hmm. is. You feel, okay, is it solid? Is it soft? How am I going to move? And again, you sort yeah. of, you literally find your feet. And here's a question for you. This is going to be a bit of a strange one. Here's the oh. scenario. You're about to walk out. You then go yeah. up to yourself what is the best thing you could say to yourself at that point to keep your head in a good headspace? Mm. Um, so I'm just about to walk out. Yeah, so you're, about, you're about to hear the music and all the rest of it, the really annoying sort of... I don't know if you have your traditional music or your actual... Anyway, you're there about to make the walk. Yeah. They say, Liam, you're up in five. Your opponent's going first, then it's you. And then you then come out of nowhere to talk to yourself and say, before you go out, don't forget to... And there's your prompt to say mm. what, you see what I mean. Mate, like to be honest, it's just like take a few deep breaths, you know. Where for, for me it's like what whatever's whatever's gonna happen in the ring is gonna happen now, you know. Nothing you can't change anything at that point, you know. Everything's done. Um you just gotta go in there and do your best basically at that point you know there's nothing there's nothing like oh shit i should have thought of this like two seconds before you're going to walk out like once you step in there whatever's going to happen it's just going to happen you know uh yeah that's all i can say that's that sort of for me sorry, sorry cut you off um, no 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 i'm starting that, don't worry that that sort <laughs> that sort of for me leading into a fight that that's what stops my mind spiraling into like oh what what if this happens what what if that happens what if i you know like for me as long as i prepare uh to the fullest of my ability like i just say to myself once we get in the ring whatever's going to happen is going to happen at that point you know definitely and again with this conversation feel free to go on tangents feel free to just be you and let loose don't worry if i'm okay or something else if you feel something i want you to be you i want you to give that across as well okay, when it, yeah. and when it comes to the way you've explained that i think that's perfect because again it's very less is more because mm-hmm. there's nothing you can say that will improve you technically in that window it's like people mm. try and get all their cardio in the week before a fight saying that should have been done eight nine weeks ago yeah, Why are you yeah, doing yeah that yeah. late but again it's all about panic reactions but again your experience to sort of say very sort of stoic, very sort of, you know, matter of fact of it's going to happen, whatever's going to happen. Enjoy yeah. it, smell the roses, crack on, you know, embrace the emotions. Because again, it's a very, there's a lot going on. And I think a lot of people, much like myself, in the moment, despise it. It's tense, it's mm. horrible, it's nervous, mm. you want to disappear. But yeah, yeah, once yeah. you get hit, once it starts, you're like, you know what, I don't want to be anywhere else right now. And it's a yeah, really, yeah. really weird thing to try and explain to people. And you know what it's like? You think, shit, I don't want this fight. I hope this fight gets cancelled. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, when's yeah. the next one? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy, mate. Like, like you say, as, as soon as 
you make contact, it's just, you're in it. It's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's that, like you say, the walkout. And then when you're looking across the ring, ready, to, I, think, I think that's a weird one. Like, I've, I've done that before in my first couple of fights where I got in the ring, I've turned around, looked at my opponent, and I thought, I'm about fire this guy. Like, what am I doing? You know, what am I doing here? But um, yeah, like you say, through experience, mate, it's just been like, as long as, and like you say, th- this was before um, you said, like, oh, it's a, it, it's a little bit stoic. And this was before, like, I ever, you know, knew anything about stoicism as well. But since since reading onto that, it has, like, sort of reconfirmed those thoughts and, and feelings. But yeah, like, for, for me, it was just as long as I prepare as well as I can prepare, um, you just have to let everything else go because you literally can't. You, you, you're, it's not in your control then. You know, once you're in the ring, the fight's just going to go how the fight goes, you know. So, well, definitely. And this, the thing where this gets very prominent is when people, it's a very dad thing and very much like an old, old boy thing of, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> So, well, yeah, I, I am. I can't switch that off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, I'm, I'm trying that bit. But again, uh, what I like about where stoicism really helps articulate these feelings is I can't stop worrying about this. However, what I, what I can do is move this energy somewhere else. If I get mm. a ticket, what, what have I done? Okay, my schedule was do this on this day, this on that day, that on this day. Did I do all that? Yes, 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 yes. Was my diet on point? How many cheat days did I have? Okay, only this one. Okay, that one there. Okay. Do you know what? That's pretty good going. If this wasn't me and I saw this, how would I view that? Is that enough for a fight? That's absolutely spot on. That's all you really need. Okay, how is he doing in rounds? How are you doing? All this sort of stuff. The things mm-hmm. you actually know what you've done versus what you haven't done. Because again, like we said a minute ago, your preparation was done before you got into the venue. Your preparation, yeah. the, fight, the fight has already won before the fight has begun. We know who's yeah. won it. We know yeah. who hasn't either subconsciously or consciously and it's a very Mm -hmm. weird thing to understand and appreciate and again i'm saying this in the comfort of my room without any fights but yeah of course like as soon as the thought of competition or fights Mm -hmm. i'm not as composed for anyone listening i'm not this sort of wise so and so i'm regurgitating things i've read i am (laughs) shitting myself (laughs) i hate it i want the thing to disappear i want to just disappear entirely but these are when you hear people like yourself saying it and applying it that's the difference. When you hear, oh, look, there's a quote on Instagram, live, laugh, love, all right, Karen, have a nice day. But it's what those words actually mean. And the fact, if you say, it doesn't have to be word for word, Marcus Aurelius, but very much, do you know what? I'm not going to give myself a hard time. I've done what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. A roundabout way, it's the same thing. And the fact you're saying that having done it, that's what gave it the value. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, um, like I say, sometimes like you know positive reinforcement helps as well you know like having success for i mean the thing is if i if i get knocked out in my next fight I, all of this stuff's probably out the window for me mate like to be honest like i'll probably be freaking out i'm like, it. like you know I'll, I'll probably lose all composure anyway so like i say it's just um you know it's e- like you say it's easy to say like when you're in the comfort of your own home or it's easy to say when I just won last night, but you know, if, if I'd have got absolutely battered last night and knocked out or whatever, it, you know, I probably might have, um, probably want to even come on this podcast to be honest, mate, but. <laughs> but again, that's the reality of it. That's the thing is. Yeah. 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 Where this again has the value is the vulnerability, you know, in your heart of hearts, if the result went the other way, you wouldn't be composed and, you know, fine. You'd be upset. Yeah. You'd be just devastated, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and this is the point. The fact you put yourself on that platform with the potential mm-hmm. of getting knocked out, the potential of bit of career ending things and then coming out of it to tell the tale. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. fuck me. Give yourself a pat on the back, man. People don't appreciate this enough. Like you hear people talk about the fights they've had. They're just numbers on a board. No, mm. they're, they're all instances where you've put yourself in this position and fuck me man it's just not easy it's not easy at all yeah it's um it is a it is a weird um yeah it's hard to explain to, like you say it's hard to explain to people um that don't do it because like like you say you do put yourself in a position like what we were saying like the fights 
going to go the way the fight's going to go. And and like I say, if sometimes your mind can spiral the wrong way and it's like, fuck that, I could get knocked out tomorrow. Like, and, you know, th- this time in two days, I could have just been like KO'd and, you know, I could be, I could be devastated. And it's, yeah, it's a strange, it's a strange um, situation it, uh, to put yourself in where it's like completely unknown and, you know, you could come out the other end of it either on top of the world or, you know, literally lying on lying on your back. So, yeah. Well, again, you get these scenarios. Like, the thing it's a Carl Jung or Joseph Campbell thing. It's pretty much in the unknown water. You won't know how to swim until you get in it. Again, you could say how to swim. I could tell you how to swim, like, verbally. But until you feel the current, you feel the temperature, you feel what's around you, you don't know how you're going to act. When push comes to shove, you mm-hmm. need to know what's going to happen. And it's a very raw, it's a very honest, and it's a very authentic thing to do. And where I will repeat myself again, I respect this beyond all belief, but putting yourself in that position where if I said to you, oh, if you had a camp against Sancho, you did all these things, X, Y, and Z, you have a chance of beating them, all this kind of stuff. I reckon I could do this, that, and the other. Yeah, yeah. But until anything happens, you're safe because you think, yeah, I've got that. Or in my head, I think I'm going to do it. But until yeah. you're in that position where you have that camp, you're in that camp, <clears throat> you have that fight, Yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how you're going to react. You mm-hmm. know that, if yeah. that fight looming over your head, you're going to do the extra mile. Will you actually, though? Will you actually yeah. push through the fatigue? Will you rest when you need to? Again, it's it's the point. This is why I value for, this so much. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And I, I literally say that to the lads in the gym all the time that are, you know, having their first fight. Um, and you know they're trying to build stuff up in their heads and I'm like I just sit, try and say to them listen you literally have no idea what you're going to do once you step in the ring like you might go in the corner and cry or you might you know excel and perform amazing like you, you just literally don't know until you put yourself there and like I say th- th- that was that was a big thing for me as well um, last night because I've not fought for a year um, so it was like I had questions myself going into last night because I was like, can I still remember how to do this? Like, you know, and it's like, what is going to happen when I put myself in there? And especially in Thailand, because you don't know who your opponent is. You don't know anything about them. You don't know what they're going to look like. And then even when you see them on the day, it's like, I don't know their fighting style. I don't know what they're good at. I don't know what they're bad at. And it's like, what knows what's going to happen here? Like, you know, just, just you know, get in there and do it. So I can't help but feel it's almost a better way to go about it. Because again, if you have an opponent you can study, say if you have an f- opponent with, I don't know, 20 fights, you have all 20 videos of those fights. If mm. you watch all of those, your head is going to be an absolute mess. Yeah. You're thinking, okay. But in that fight, they did this, but that fight, they did that. And so on and so forth. Yeah. You, you end up building this picture and you create this monster of what they could be. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you don't know who they are, what they're like, what's the only thing you could focus on? You. And yeah, yourself, that, yeah. And, and what do you need to focus on to improve yourself? You. Yeah. So in some, obviously the strategies at the higher levels and so on and so forth, I can't help but mm. feel it's almost a, a necessary evil, especially at this stage. Yeah, I think, um, like I say, I think there's, pro- I think there's pros and cons to, to both sides of it. But like I say, if unless you're sort of competing uh, right at the top end of like, you know, your one championships, your UFC, whatever. Um, I think, I think you're probably right, mate. Like, to be honest, like, I think um, just constantly trying to improve, prove yourself and be, be the best version of yourself and the best version of your, bring the best version of your game into the fight. Um, and then just like I say, keep, keep focusing on just, Improve, improving all areas of your game every single fight and then going into every fight expecting well not expecting anything in particular like this could go literally anywhere you know I think I think that is a good good way to go about it until you you reach that like upper echelon and then you know you can start being specific and tweaking little bits but yeah yeah I totally agree mate yeah Definitely. And when it comes to development in Thai, I had this similar sort of points with Dan McGowan, which was when you start training, you do a lot of everything. 
you do your skipping, you do your footwork drills, you do mm-hmm. ex- loads of... Lo- the thing that really got me was the amount of reps on the same side. Again, you'd never throw 10 kicks in a fight on the same leg back-to-back because yeah. ev- eventually you're going to get caught. So yeah, yeah, yeah. certain things really convert well, some things don't. What do you do now? Sorry, what did you used to do what you don't do now because it doesn't work for you? Um, well, it's a bit tough um, because obviously coming out to Thailand, um, I just had to say to myself, you, you've just got to give yourself to the, to the gym and the routine basically because y- you're, not, you're not in control. Like No matter how much sports science I read up or no matter how specific I try and make my training back in the UK or, you know, all of that stuff sort of out the window when you come out to Thailand. So you just have to, you know, coming out here because I can be a little bit um, specific and OCD with with um, my routines and and um, and my schedules when I'm leading up to fights in the UK. So when I, when I come out to Thailand, I just I, I just sort of said to myself, you know what, I just got to let all that go. And if if they make me run ridiculous amount of miles every morning or they make me do ridiculous amount of reps on this or that um so be you know that's 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 part of um the life out here you know and that's part of of trying to make it out here but um you know in in the uk again massive you know running is a massive thing here in thailand i don't do nowhere near as much running um anymore um i'm just trying to think of of what else like you know like you say you're ridiculous you know we do we do kicking drills to an extent to get fit but again like not not in the thousands and thousands of reps where you would you know and um just sort of bringing in more strength and conditioning and I don't do loads of strength and conditioning, but I think I think there's a good swapping out some boxing sessions uh, for for other areas just to you know have more have more of a well-rounded schedule. To be honest, you know, well, definitely. It's just sort of what I liked about that was you had your own preconceptions of what you prefer, but you didn't let that override. The potential to then try it again from a different perspective because going mm. in somewhere else at home you can't then say oh in my house we do something differently you just sort of yeah you know you say, okay i'm going to be a good guest i'm going to be respectful I'm gonna, yeah. you know yeah. at least at least try the food before i say i don't like it because again mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, it's not a very natural thing you know what you like you know what you don't like especially the length of time you've been training as well like you know oh that combination doesn't work for me although you tell mm-hmm. yourself that so you go somewhere else, you won't be able to appreciate what they can give you unless you have a truly open mind. And it's not a natural mm-hmm. thing. And again, I say this very flippantly almost that you just got to listen and do it. No, when if you haven't got any experience, you've got no preference. But when you start yes. training something, say if you've only trained with one bloke, say he's Joe Bloggs or I don't know, <laughs> Mac Ty, Mac, Mr. Muay Thai. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> he says every time you jab, you got to put your other hand on the same side as you're jabbing. It's inherently wrong. Everyone knows it's wrong, but you don't know different at that point. So you do this every time you throw a jab. You go to a new place. They say, don't do that. You're a fucking idiot. Why are you doing that? <laughs> the same yeah. side you can block. You're like, no, no, no. My coach said otherwise. I'm not going to listen to you because I'd know differently. Now, that's a very exaggerated example, but you see my point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, um, like you say, in order to reap, reap the benefits of being out here and and also like you say reap the rewards of of um fighting out here um those are just that's just what you have to do you know like like say um whether i it's my personal preference or not or whether um i agree not to say Mm. i mean these guys these guys here obviously have got you know yeah much more experience than me but like you say everyone has the personal preference and everyone's you know figures it out for themselves with trial and error but um you know in order to get the benefits of of you know the knowledge and the experience that's out here and also 
um, the opportunities that comes with the fights. You just have to like like you said, mate. Like just give yourself give yourself to the um, house owner. You know, I'm I'm the guest here, so yeah. Who am I to to give the orders? Like, but even that, like, it's just so being coachable is one of the most underappreciated assets because a little bit of wisdom is a very dangerous thing. A bit, a little bit of knowledge. And at least in my current like life, my biggest priority right now is trying to relearn things I think I know. Mm. Because if I asked you how good you think you are at Muay Thai, obviously unless you'd be modest and say, oh, you know, I'm all right. But you know, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty clued up. If you then say, do you know what? If I told you right now, the way you throw your jab and your low kick is wrong, you'd buck up a little bit like, oh, excuse me. What do you think you're saying? Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. But to then say, if you change it X, Y, and Z, but to listen to that in an open mind, like even if I said to you now, I'll show you a jab cross, you will all automatically be like, okay, I know how I'm going to do it. If that doesn't line up with how I'm doing it, he's doing it wrong. Again, yeah, yeah. again it's not a, a natural <clears throat> thing to be rewired because again, you've built up the patterns, you've put your time in this. So this is mm. why being coachable is so important. And again, I know it's having you on and I'm sort of saying all this sort of thing, but this is why what you're saying is that much more valuable than it's, probably going to get credit for do you see what i mean mm -hmm. yeah definitely and 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 like you say the, the that's that's the main reason why i'm out here you know it's like to to get the knowledge and experience from from all all of these people out here and there's no point me me coming out here and saying well i don't really agree with this and you know this is how i like you say i do it back home and uh you know we're running too many miles i, I Oh, this this isn't good. I mean, it, it's tough, and it, I think a lot of the time it's like I'm not used to a specific style of training, or you know, when when guys come over here, it's like, God, this is so so much more of this. I'm not I'm not used to it, and you know, like you say, you just, this is what you've got to do to reap the rewards of it as well. You do what you always done. You'll get what you always got. And it's a very bit of pill to swallow sometimes, but no, I've got a lot of respect for you. Again, it takes a lot to be a beginner again. And I mean that very literally, the fact you're going in as an experienced fighter to then listen and learn like a beginner. It's a very, oh, yeah, very mate, hard listen, thing to do. I, I feel like a beginner out here anyway, mate, to be honest, especially clinching with these guys, you know, it's, um, yeah, yeah. Sort of, um, that was one of the things I had to sort of say to myself after the first week um of being here because you don't really know how you're gonna match up to the levels until you actually get here like you say like sometimes you know your, your ego can kick in a little bit and you think yeah you know what i'm gonna come out here and you know i'm, go I'm gonna be pretty good and then you realize like you say there's levels and the ties are just so so uh i, I would say like so just so good at what they do hmm. you know and and th and th they're so good at their style and like i say i just had to have a word with myself and say you know what like this is just being like like i said to you at the beginning like being the whooping boy you know that's just part of that's just part of being out here you know and and all all, all i can do is you know not not compare myself to everyone else in the gym but as long as i'm making progress and, and and working hard and getting better you know you just got to trust the process and and trust that you know being around these people and being around this knowledge and, and the le this level of uh fighters it's just you know it's only going to make me better even though you don't necessarily always feel it in the moment because you're just getting pieced up every day mm -hmm. but you know like you just got to tr like i say trust trust the process you know it's as cliche as it sounds, but if you have the right attitude, you never lose a round of sparring. Like regardless of the actual result, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that's, very that's hard to um, to appreciate what's going on. And you say, oh, he beat me, oh, I beat him, and so on and so forth. Well, mm. not really. It's not scored. Like the difference between a fight yeah, and the actual yeah, sparring yeah. is a setup. Everything else, you know, obviously there's intricacies, but the principle is your record is a very, it's a facade. If you take into account mm -hmm. all your sparring rounds, if they were scored, they could clout to a record. You could have thousands upon thousands of fights. Again, mm -hmm. the numbers don't really translate the same way. Again, it's your development. If you, yeah. say if you yeah. go to an MMA gym, you get submitted by someone in a, in a role before you even start. That could be 0-1 as, as an MMA fighter. 
Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? It's, it keeps on going and going mm-hmm. and going. This is sort of the point. This is where you can sort of get the most out of it. So when you're sparring even out there as the guest, how do you find the pace and setting the pace there? Like, What's your reference point for, okay, say first spar in Thailand, in the, in the old gym where you're at now, what is your reference point? How hard are you going? What are you doing? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, like the um, the sparring out here is good. Like you, you know, at, the, at this gym, it's not it's not too hard. You know, I haven't uh, come in and tried bully my way in. Like you say, I'm just I'm just t- sort of taking that um, like say student mindset where it's just like you know feel it feel feel it out see see how it goes um yeah the spar the sparring's been 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 really good um to be honest like you say i'm just trying to pick up their habits look what they do while look what they're aiming to do in the sparring and just sort of um pick apart yeah just pick apart what what they're trying to do and what they work on and yeah trying to implement my own game but also take take on board what what they're what they're doing and what they're showing in their sparring you know but in the same vein there it was more pace and intensity is what was more getting out of that is it okay so you're trying to land the technique in that session as itself are you trying to set your stones okay i'm here to sort of show up not so much to win but going quite hard you see what i mean with that sort of idea because again it's a bit of a you're in someone else's house it's then okay do i try and knock them out do i try and play nice yeah okay um i think I think there's a bit of balance of both, like because obviously you don't want to be, come in and be the rude guest and try and um, you know ruffle any feathers, but at the same time, you know, like you don't. Everyone's a competitor as well in the gym, and you know you're not you're not coming in here to sort of be nice. Everyone gets it, you know. Everyone everyone hears the fighters. Um, you know, so they all understand, you know, we're not all here to be Mr. Nice Guy all the time. Like, we're all, we're all friends. We're all, you know, we're all um, companions. But, you know, we're, we're sparring and stuff. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be Mr. Nice Guy. But, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not that sort of guy where I come in and try and, you know, knock anyone out and make a statement in the gym or anything like that you know um yeah i'm i'm probably sort of in the middle in the middle you know Mm. because there's something you said there which is very very prominent because if you go in there like oh i respect everyone so much i'm I'm nice don't don't get upset with me you will stay exactly where you are you'll be liked but that's not anything what you really mm-hmm. want is that balance. You have a potential. Okay, if we're going to like, you know, it's business, we're going to bite down on the gum shields, we're going to go a bit harder this round. At that point, some people are all right, it goes too hard. All right, sometimes, okay, he goes, I'm my respect. You get loved and hated. You get your, again, you're being respectful, but you're also being you. And again, like, you don't spar like you're playing. Obviously, you have to learn how to play with people. You need to learn how to spar in the way that their environment sits. But in the same breath, you need to, establish where you are in that pecking order because as much as it we're all friends we're all a team and everything else yeah yeah you you tell me you say it hand on heart you don't size people up when you're in the gym thinking okay i think we'll do right against you <laughs> yeah yeah of course yeah yeah and and, and like you say it, it's finding that balance as well where you're not it's it's not personal mm, not you're not you're, not you're not you're not in you're not sparring people to hurt them it's not it, you're not against your sparring partner you know it's it's got to be for you but at the same time like you say you're not you're not in there to be friends whilst you're sparring you know and but i think to be honest like the ties are good like that anyway and i think that's that's one thing that helps with the language barrier a little bit as well because you don't have a chance to be really oh you pally pally you know because we're not really speaking to each other so it's just like yeah let's let's yeah, let's get on with it let's, 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 crack on, yeah. that's it let's crack on yeah exactly that mate yeah so and and the same with the with the with the clinch as well you know it's like you know what it's like sometimes in the gym like people are having chats like oh yeah let's 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 
you know, play around a little bit, you know, there's none of that. They don't speak the language. So it's just like, okay, let's, let's grab each other or let's, let's like kick each other, punch each other, whatever. So, you know, I don't, it's not, you don't have the luxury of like, oh yeah, let's be pally pally all the time, you know? So. The funny thing with that is the lack of communication makes it clear what you mean. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because if I say to you, let's spar light, you, you've you got your own reference. I've got my own reference point. If I say, ooh, whoever no noisy they are, yeah, they, they would tap a little play, like, okay, I reciprocated that pace. You see what yeah. I think it's quite easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, without saying anything, you say much more. Yes, yeah, I, I completely agree, yeah. And like, like you say, you just, um, you don't need to, yeah, you don't need to verbalise it. It doesn't have to be said, oh, yeah, let's, you know, let's spar light today or, you know, let, let's do this today. It's like, no, we just let's just get into it and we'll, we'll see where it goes we'll see what happens you know that's yeah that's that's the sort of the beauty of being out here as well 100 percent. and now regards of the few bits of bobs before i let you go having mm -hmm. competed overseas and everything else again you're at the home comforts how did you find going into that fight knowing you were the outsider as in representing this gym the potential of getting shafted by judges what was your mindset going into that fight um uh, yeah, for, for me, I mean, you know, like I'm not really, um, cause I think sometimes it's a bit of a cop out where it's like, oh, I just, I just want to put on a good performance. Like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm coming to, I'm coming to win, mate. Yeah. Like, do, do you know what I mean? But like, at the same time, um, you know, it has been a year, and it's obviously the first fight for, for, for this gym as well, and. I wouldn't say, obviously, because I've only been here three weeks, I don't want to say I was representing the gym, you know, but, like, I wanted to mm -hmm. show show what I could do, and I did want to put on, you know, perform well for the gym. So that was in my mind a little bit as well. Um, but obviously, again, you know, I'm, I'm going in there to win, like, basically. So, you know, um, the mindset for the fight, to be honest, like, I wasn't sure on the day if the nerves had like creep like like what we were talking about earlier creep up and sort of spring on me all of a sudden in the moment but I, I was all good to be honest mate like I was, I was focused and you know I just want to get in there and get the job done to be honest and get get that first first fight out the way blow the cobwebs off and then we're rolling into the year now you know we've got the fight feeling back and yeah we're ready to roll really and I look forward to see how far that rolls. Um, before I let you go, my friend, social media, where can people find you? Um, so I don't really use Facebook, but it's mainly just Instagram. So it's um, Liam Griffin underscore 95. Uh, that's that's the Instagram. That's that's what I use mainly. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so yeah, check out our sponsors, the English Hypnotist. So regards of competition, business, anything you need. Again, self-sabotage is a recurrent like, topic for me. And then get your own head like we spoke about today. Speak to Richard, fantastic bloke, can really help you start stepping things up and again achieving more of your full potential. Um, check out Fisticuffs underscore podcast on all social media platforms. We've got the Rash Guards in, we've got the Balletudos in, we've got some new shorts on route. That's a little bit exclusive there. And um, on the note, check out Liam's stuff, support his journey, and stay safe and take care.